If I relaxed anymore, <laughs> I probably wouldn't have noticed you walk in. <laughs> well, I'm glad. We just wanted to get you primed up to talk about sleep by listening to some of Headspace's sleep track. The philosopher Kant called music a quickening art because it can bring things to life. It can make a memory. It can change your mood. It has more power to stimulate the brain than anything else. If music can rouse you and wake you up, can it also help you relax? and give you a better night's sleep? Let's face it, none of us would turn down the chance to have a more restful sleep. And conversely, there are times we'd all love to feel more refreshed and awake. Does the way we use music within our sleep routines hold the key? This is such a hot button issue these days for most folks, and it's because people really aren't sleeping enough. Are we working too hard? Probably. Are we're, we on our phones too much? We're definitely on our phones too much. We all know that. Yes. But, but I have found that people get oddly obsessive about how many hours they're sleeping or how they're even sleeping. Yeah. But I never really hear people talk about when they sleep. When is the optimal time for your unique biology okay. to go to bed and to wake up? So it's unique for every person, though? It is unique for every okay. person. Imagine a fantasy world where we're now all going to bed when the, the you know, perfect, appropriate time is for our bodies, right? We're not pushing okay. ourselves. There is still the main culprit for sleep issues outside of that, and that is really poor sleep hygiene. Okay. It's that we're too physiologically aroused in the evening to fall deeply into sleep quickly. So I wanted to actually introduce you, if I may, to the optimal state curve, okay? Okay. On the y-axis, we have performance, or in other words, how are you feeling? So how is your body performing, your mind performing? Exactly. Okay. And then you have arousal here. Arousal meaning how physiologically alert and okay. stimulated are you? I don't know if you know what this curve is gonna look like, but it is an inverted U-shaped curve. Okay. Okay? What does this mean? When arousal is low. Performance is low. Performance is low. When arousal is too high, we are way too stimulated, you're anxious. So you wanna yeah. be kind of in your mid zone to be completely like focused. So I'm actually gonna ask you, where do you think you are on this curve right now? We'll, we'll both be honest. Right this moment? Yes, yeah. So I feel like I'm a little sleepier. Yeah. Uh, I had some coffee this morning. Okay. Uh, I'm carrying on a stimulating conversation. Okay, I'm gonna put you right here. How okay. about that? I'm gonna actually put both of us here. Okay. Because that's how I'm feeling. Every single night before bed, I want folks to start to become aware of where they are at on their optimal state curve. Mm -hmm. I'm a cognitive trainer, so I am a firm believer in you own this. Okay. Know where you're at, change it. It's all about up and down regulation. So for example, if you feel like you're too anxious, you down regulate. So you either move yourself into the sweet spot, but you really don't want to be at the sweet spot when you're going to bed, mm -hmm. right? You want to be down here. Yeah. You want lower arousal so that you feel sleepy and then you can actually get some shut eye. Okay. Number one way to do that is the breath. Okay. The, our respiratory system is the physiological override for this entire system of what's going on in our minds. Sounds like something Headspace can help us with. Absolutely. Okay. Ready for some exercises? Let's exercise. Let's do this. Well, the first is breathing techniques. So an upper chest breath you're only gonna be breathing into the upper respiratory system. And what you're going to be doing is actually breathing in through the mouth and mm -hmm. out through the mouth. Oh, okay. So the nose is not involved. And you do quick breaths in, quick big breath in through the mouth, only towards the upper chest, filling up the chest, opening up the shoulders, collapsing back down, opening back up, back down. We'll do 15 together. Whenever you're ready, you go ahead and get started. Okay. <sighs> okay. How you feeling? I do feel like there's a rush going on, like uh, yeah. there's more of a party going on in my body. There we go, okay, yeah. a little bit more of a party. How's the body temperature feeling? You look like you're glowing a little bit in the cheeks. Yeah. Looking perhaps. more awake. Yes. Hopefully moving you out of this a little bit closer to that. Yeah, yeah? I do I do think it, it does create a little rush. Now let's do a different breathing exercise to move ourselves back. Okay. okay? That where you wanna focus on the diaphragm. Okay. More traditional, right? Yes. Very headspace type of breathing technique. 
What you want to do here is breathe in through the nose, mm -hmm. out through the mouth, slowly, but I want you to do a counted breath. Let's breathe into a count of five, and you want to breathe into the belly. Breathe into a count of five. Hold, and exhale to a count of five. And then inhale again to a count of five. Hold, and exhale this time to a count of six. Just elongating that exhalation. Beautiful. So this is an example of a counted breath. The goal of a counted breath is to make the exhale a little bit longer ratio-wise compared to the inhalation. When you do that, you're just overriding your sympathetic nervous system to say, we're relaxing. Okay. We ha no matter what is going on, literally it could be raining fire from the heavens and you're telling your body, chill out. It is nothing to worry about at this moment in time. Okay. Another, I think, often underutilized technique to either up or down regulate is music. <sighs> Your favorite. <laughs> We're so important. I know. <laughs> I'm actually going to have you listen, if you're up for it, Yeah. to a song that is definitely more hypey, a little bit high energy. Okay, kind of let's get hype. Mm -hmm. Before we explore music and sleep, let's meet someone who works with music every night to keep the party going and keep people up. I love streaming late at night into the morning because I'm a night owl. I can stay up for hours. My parents were both musicians, so growing up, I've always just been in the nightlife scene. Hi, I'm Bella Fiasco. I'm a full-time club DJ, but the pandemic has turned me into a full-time streaming DJ. I'm on Twitch Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and I kind of made a name for myself as the marathon streaming DJ. I've gone 16, 17 hours streaming. I'll stream forever. I don't stop because I'm sleepy. I just stop because I'm hungry. Hi guys, welcome to Mischief Monday. After 12, I get the people who are just winding down. Any crowd after 3 a.m. is when witch hours happen. Usually that's when things get a little more interesting, but if I go into the 4 a.m. crowd, they like that gritty shit. They like deep cuts, they like Griselda. With this platform, I've been able to build a community that loves music just as much as I do, but also stays up as late as I do. So I'm not just playing music for myself. Seconds, 14, 13. This time I get to play music for people just like me. All right, how did that feel? It felt good. Do you have a song that you use to get yourself kind of amped up to move rightwards on this? Not really, I'm not as intentional as perhaps I should be. Mm. Yeah. Well, you can always borrow mine. I listen to DMX anytime I need to okay. get on stage and have my love energy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it, it does it for me. It, I don't know if it's my childhood growing yes. up in the Bay Area, but it just does it for me every time. It's but if you're way over here, maybe you need it to get there. If you need it, right? <laughs> Whip it out when you need it. Break the glass in case of emergency. Yes. So the, the, the big take home, right, is that you're somewhere. Yeah. on this, let's normalize it. Mm -hmm. We're not all at 100% all the time, Yes. right? And we're not all ready for bed when it's time to go to bed. Yeah. What can we do leading up to bedtime to help us to really downregulate, right? Music. Music, deep, low belly breathing, low counted belly breathing. breathing. Mm -hmm. yes. Music has been shown through multiple studies to help with sleep onset. Mm -hmm. Sleep onset referring to the amount of time it actually takes you to fall asleep. Once you okay. start trying. Once you start trying. Once yep. your head hits the pillow, it shouldn't really be more than 15 minutes. Okay. And if it's more than that, best piece of advice I can give you, get out of bed until you're sleepy. Listen to some music, do some breathing, get your body physiologically less aroused, move leftward on the curve until you're ready to re-enter the bed and try to fall asleep again. And keep doing this until you retrain those neural networks. And it's going to get easier. You're gonna hit that sleep song before mm -hmm. bed and your brain is gonna know exactly what's happening. It's gonna easily, it's gonna be a lullaby for you. And you're gonna fall right into sleep. Music has also been shown to increase sleep quality. Mm. This is a new set of studies so keep that's it just playing through out. the night potentially keep it playing throughout the night. Mm -hmm. It's been shown to definitely help with helping you fall asleep faster for sure, but also making sure that you stay in a deep sleep. The bottom line is we have some control over all these aspects of our mind and our body, and we should learn to use these tools to help exert that control. Absolutely, absolutely. After this insightful look into my own sleep habits, 
I understand how I can personally use music to drive myself into a state of relaxation or a state of ready for anything. It's literally all in my hands. If you're looking to sleep soundly tonight, try Headspace. They've got stories, music, and sounds designed to help you drift off and stay that way. Get it in the app now. See you again next week when we'll be trying to find out if music can also improve your memory.